Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about a new unit, and that unit is about DNA. Bom, bom, bom. Okay, DNA is what is called a genetic molecule. Um, we didn't always know about DNA. It's sort of a relatively new discovery in the last hundred years. And what we did know was uh, when they started looking for it, they understood that this genetic molecule had to do three things. It had three jobs it had to do. So what were those jobs? It had to make a copy of itself. Cells divide very rapidly and very often. And it turns out that we need, uh, a, we need a genetic molecule in each new cell. The only way that happens is when the cell divides in half, the genetic molecule has made a copy of itself so each cell can get a copy. Okay, that's number one. Number two, the genetic molecule has to tell the cell how to make all the parts of the cell. It needs to be able to tell the cell how to make a ribosome or a phospholipid bilayer or a nucleus or uh, um, even more DNA or endoplasmic reticulum, any of that stuff, any of those cool organelles. The genetic molecule is the thing that tells the cell to do it and then the last thing is that genetic molecule has to store the information on how to do it okay so it tells the cell to do it and it also has to tell it how to do it and it has to store that information so it's kind of like hey go make some cookies but if you don't know a cookie recipe you can't make cookies so you got to have a recipe well here's the recipe it's in that genetic molecule um so those were the three jobs that a genetic molecule had to do. And everybody kind of knew that, but they didn't know what the molecule was, okay? Now, it turns out that, uh, whoops, that this guy comes along, Frederick Griffith. This is in 1928, okay, Frederick Griffith. And 1928, he is not trying to figure out what the genetic molecule is. Instead, he was trying to determine how bacteria make us sick, okay? The scientists of the day knew that bacteria cause things like strep throat and pneumonia and botulism and tetanus, but they didn't know how they did it. And so that's what Griffith was researching, was he was trying to look at these little guys' bacteria here, and he was trying to say, hey, how do these guys make us sick? That was his whole goal, okay? Now... This is just one example of streptococcus or of bacteria. There's plenty of types, but um, here's the type that that Griffith used: Streptococcus pneumoniae. Now, Streptococcus pneumoniae is a species of bacteria, just like dogs are a species of animal or oak trees are a species of plant. This is a species of bacteria, and Streptococcus pneumoniae has several breeds just like dogs have breeds, right? You have German Shepherd and you have Cocker Spaniel and you have Pitbull and you have uh, Poodle. Uh, this type of Streptococcus pneumonia had what we call them strains. And some strains were harmless. They didn't hurt you at all. Other strains of Streptococcus pneumonia are what give you strep throat. When you have strep throat, that's what you have, Streptococcus pneumonia. Uh, sometimes instead of strep throat, you get pneumonia and that's water in your lungs, and that pneumonia is caused by the bacteria, streptococcus pneumoniae also, but they are different strains or breeds of streptococcus pneumoniae. So Griffith here used two types of strains, two types of the streptococcus pneumonia bacteria. I'll move this out of the way so that I can uh, show you what kinds. Move that, will that work? Right there, yeah. So his first strain he used was the R strain. It was it looked rough. It's a long story, but the R strain that's why they call it the R strain. The R strain. The important thing about it is it's harmless. It doesn't cause pneumonia. It does not cause strep throat. It doesn't do anything negative to us. It just lives in us sometimes. It's fine. No big deal. But the other strain he used did cause pneumonia, and this is called the S strain because it looks smooth. And it was harmful. It caused pneumonia. Okay, This pneumonia would kill a mouse, which we'll get to in just a second. But R strain harmless, S strain harmful because it caused pneumonia. Okay? Excellent. Okay. 
Now, uh, once we get these guys out of here, so when we're looking back at um, Mr. Griffith and we're asking ourselves, hey, what did Griffith do? Well, he did all of his experiments on these guys, mice, okay? And really what he did is he injected the streptococcus pneumoniae into the mouse to see what would happen. Okay. He was pretty sure he knew when it would cause disease, when it wouldn't, but then he started to mix things up. So what was he really doing? He was putting streptococcus pneumoniae into a mouse. Now let me give you a diagram that shows how he did each step. Okay. Here we go. Here's our diagram. Okay. Now, the first experiment, he kind of did four experiments mixed into one. The first experiment, he took the S strain. And remember, the S strain is harmful. It causes pneumonia. He injected that S strain into the mouse, and lo and behold, the mouse died. Okay? Pretty much what we expected to happen. Now, then on the next one, he took the R strain. Remember, the R strain is harmless. It does not cause pneumonia. When he put that R strain into the mouse, the mouse lived. Excellent for the mouse. Okay? Good day at the office. Now, then he did something interesting with this S strain on the third one. Okay, on the third one, and you can use this sheet to write this down, but on the third one, what he did is he took this harm, this S strain, which causes pneumonia, but he killed it with heat. He basically boiled it, broke it into pieces, and all of a sudden, it he injected that in the mouse, and all of a sudden, he realized, hey, that did not kill the mouse. So if this strain of bacteria was dead, right, we'll have it looming back here, right? If this bacteria was dead, broken apart, then the mouse lived. It didn't cause the disease. Even though if it was alive, it would cause the disease. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Well, now here's the weird thing. So on this last one, what he did was he took dead S strain, this right here, where the mouse lives. And he took live R strain right here where the mouse lived. So in both these circumstances, the mouse lived. He mixed them together. And when he mixed them together, the mouse died. Okay? He killed S strain, live R strain, mixed together, kills a mouse. Dun, dun, dun. So the question is why? Well, what he did is he took a blood sample from the mouse and he found live S strain. He found this stuff alive. He hadn't injected this alive. Okay, that's the stuff that kills the mouse. He did not put the live stuff in there. He put dead S strain in there. He put live R strain. He's like, maybe I made a mistake. He did the whole thing again. Same thing happened. He did it over and over and over. And every time the mouse died here, did not die here, he realized, he realized, this is what's important. He realized, this is kind of his conclusion, that something was transforming this live R strain and turning it into live S strain, which then caused pneumonia, and the mouse died. How crazy cool is that? He didn't know what it was. He did not know what was causing it, but he knew that there was some molecule that was probably doing the transforming. He called this the transforming agent. Okay? This is what's cool. He's a transforming agent. He did not know what it was. He thought, hey, maybe it's a gene. He'd heard that word passed around as a molecule of, of a genetic molecule of heredity, but he didn't really know what a gene was. And he certainly didn't know what kind of molecule made a gene. He just called it the transforming agent. And that's what he learned from this, was that a transforming agent turned the live R strain into the live S strain. Okay? I think that covers all the questions on the sheet. If you didn't get it all, just go back. Pause, go back, see what you missed, okay? All right. Well, get work, working on your project then. Peace out.